I'll keep that in mind, sir. Most people don't know this, but the closest thing to old Nollywood is YouTube movies. This is a good thing, but also bad, because when you remember how bad some old movies were, you won't be happy about it. That being said, their only flaw is budgeting. They are always indoors because they can't afford more than a big house. And let's not talk about the grade of actors they have. Stop talking like a child and heavy act. Do not talk to me like that. Who said I did? I didn't cheat on you. I told you such a lie and, and you believed it. But that's the good thing about YouTube movies. It's independent and it's just pure generic story. Jasin did not travel to anywhere. I just saw Jasin with another woman stepping out of a hotel. Not everything should be deep like what you see on Netflix. So what happens when a respected actor makes a movie with another really good actor? You get unexpected places. You know what I, you, you know the movie already. <laughs> Alright, roll intro. Uh The movie wastes no time in telling you that this is a prodigal story. You first see Chris as he's running from his dad because he offended him. But Chris is no pushover. He fights back. And I like him for that. If he touches me, he's going down. But the reason why Chris is fighting his dad is because his dad wants to bring him to a bored, boring meeting. But Chris is a man with priorities. He had two options. Pick his babe's birthday or, or a boring meeting about his future. And I always say this. Life is short. So who cares about the future? And again, who puts a board meeting on Friday? How does that even make sense? So he goes for the party and she sent him home because he was too drunk. And I like Chris. He didn't stress. He left, saw some thugs, gave them one key and got into an accident. Ah! Only because he had to pick between looking at the road and picking his alcohol. <laughs> you know Chris, he has to pick the alcohol. <laughs> Who is Chris, you might ask? He's a sports brat that has always gotten everything he wanted. And he has an ego that is stronger than any random body odor you would find in the box. And he cares about no one but himself. For instance, his maid was exhaling because she was sick. But my guy did not hear her or care about her well-being. So wait, what exactly am I paying you for? I'm not feeling too well. Uh, uh, I'm not feeling too well. Do I look like a doctor to you? So in a funny twist, his dad decided to finally act like a father and cut him off financially. And if he has to make money, he has to work for him. Prodigal son story, remember what I said. And don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of his dad. I hate that he always uses any opportunity to nag about life and it's a tad bit overbearing. So his maid finally kicked the bucket. Okay, I'm joking. You should not die yet. Wait. She goes for a break for two weeks because she kept on trying to die in his house and Chris can't allow that happen. And she's like a dragon and every time... That's <gasps> what she's doing. I think in her script is written there boldly. Exhale. <laughs> so dragon decides to call her daughter to replace her and this is where the movie goes from being good to be an awesome. The daughter starts walking without consent. She just opened the door and started cooking. Good morning, sir. Her name is Prosper. By the way, anytime I hear her name, I always think of a man. So wait, let's do this exercise. Close your eyes for a bit. Prosper. Prosper. What, 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 what do you think of? Don't think of a man. I think of a man. Is your eyes still closed? Open it now. I'm done. <laughs> okay. And where Dragon failed, Prosper excelled. She actually worked hard and not all those, oh, I'm sick and I, I need to go for an operation. Chris, after fighting back, starts working for his dad. But he's giving this cubicle in the lower level um, staff region. The people that normally sit in these chairs are the ones that as soon as they just get to work, Thorn has to hand them a cooler and they have to start looking for food for Thorn. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I won't lie, I watched this movie and I don't know what these guys do. Are, are they like Jumia? Are, are they selling furniture? I don't know. So if you do, comment down below, please. As that was happening, Prosper was doing the most, as usual. Ah, ah, ah. Hey? Hey, come! If you, if you run, leave me alone. Oh, what, what, what are you doing, my gas for? My God. Ah! After a while, Chris starts trying to actually impress his dad. He comes up with this referral code idea and the whole company was impressed. Like, wow, I've never heard of this before. And I don't blame them, it's Nigeria. We hardly do that. Jokes apart, I love how consistent Chris' character is written. This guy doesn't care and he's numb to everything. There was this part in the movie where Chris was like, Prosper, 
see your mind. Bear in mind, he just shouted on her and she insulted him so much, she, I think she tore him a new one. Is this really how you are? Or is this just some act to appear tough? For you, but do you have to be downright condescending and disrespectful? Between your fridge and your pocket, I don't know which one is emptier, but here I am still working for you passionately. Why is your head so far shoved up your ass? And I was shocked that my guy just took it. Like, he took it. And I like that. Don't be say, person will just shout on you. Next thing you say, show more age, Mini. <laughs> do you know how old I am? This has nothing to do with the review, but I really dislike this lady. <laughs> I don't know why. She just vexes me. She's like those women that stay with their man you know, they drink thick and thin, but they genuinely love when it is thick. <laughs> because that's when they go, I'm always gonna be here for you, baby. She just she gives off that energy. Am I right? Also, at this point, everyone starts saying Chris' eye is yellow. He starts falling a lot and he keeps shouting, My head is banging. My head is banging me. <laughs> they bang me. What am I even saying, honestly? Also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm going to be getting married by the end of this year, so I would, I would like to make enough money so I can cheat on her. <laughs> Some quick things happened here and there. His dad took away his car because he missed work for five days, not knowing my guy was falling ill my guy was almost dead then we now have some bonding time prosper tells him this tragic story on how she loved the smell of coil and one night she put on the coil and he touched the, the curtain and the house was on fire but her dad was like no not my daughter he rushed into the house and saved the daughter and he died r.i.p to him but i don't care he named her prosper so good readings to that guy <laughs> After that tale, Chris didn't say much. He just he was like, hey, yeah, go make dinner. <laughs> you <three> talk. <laughs> In act two of the movie, Chris decides to deceive his dad. So let me explain. Chris' father wants him to be responsible and he thinks having a wife in his house would make him be responsible. If only he googled how many deadbeat dads are roaming the streets of Lagos. He won't think that way again. So Chris decides to use Prosper so he can get his Alawi back. They negotiated that he would pay her 1 million naira, and their only rule was no one should fall in love. So let's play a game for the people who haven't watched this movie. Who do you think would fall in love first? Pause now and comment down below. Alright, let's continue. They give her this wardrobe change and they're only doing this because this babe loves to wear trousers. Every scene. Trouser. They meet his dad, but initially the dad was suspicious because this was too soon. But after this babe got on her knees and stroked this man ego, my guy was like, mm? You're welcome to the family. How on earth did this man make his money with this mindset? And the heist worked. Chris got promoted, got his car back, worked more closely with his dad. You know there is space in the car, right? You don't have to sit that close. So we know you love him. They become very close and Chris fell in love. <laughs> Sorry, my guy. No, no, I'm starting to fall in love with you. Please. Who be this one? I don't know your papa. Is a mad me. Their love wouldn't kick off well. Chris would become very sick. His long struggle with alcohol got him. And that's why I tell you guys, stop drinking alcohol, please. But the infection affected his liver and his dad was like, take mine, take mine. Take mine. <laughs> to wrap this movie up, because I've been talking for a while, Prosper mom was like, you can take my breathing. You can take my husband. But don't useless my son. Prosper. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. And in her presence, they start showcasing love. And I was shocked that this woman who couldn't even walk three steps an hour ago is dragging the babe up and down. But this didn't stop them. They slept with each other and he dropped his seed in her. That's explicit, but you're an adult now. You should be able to take what I'm saying. They tried to fly him out, but the doctor was like, hey, your son will die if you not try that thing. And after a long struggle with this illness, um, um, guess who died? Chris's Chris died. I don't say Chris is fine. Chris died leaving Prosper with their new child, Willpower. Oh, you thought the bad names is going to stop after Prosper? No! Willpower is his son. The boy's first child's name is Goodness and Messies. <laughs> Above all <life. laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> it wasn't a bad movie. I see why people like it. 5 million views in like 8 days is mad. Hopefully it touches my channel. <laughs> my expectations for a part 2 would be he would be resurrected and join the WWE as Undertaker. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> so stupid man. What the fuck? <laughs>